Hey everyone, just wanted to cover in this particular video something that has really in my mind become such a key feature in a implementation of Power BI, a successful one, and that is data flows. Data flows to me is a feature that is probably vastly underutilized out there for the value um, potential that it can add to your overall deployment. I'd even go as far to say that I think it's one of the key pillars in a firm, a successful firm-wide implementation of Power BI now. Firstly, why, what is a data flow? The way that I like to explain and almost visualize a data flow is it's like a, it's like a pipe. It's like a data pipe from da data at its rawest form to piping it into, say, a Power BI desktop file or, or a Power BI development, a Power BI report. Now, that's a, a simple way to explain it. Another way to explain it is it's really Power Query in the cloud. It's taking Power Query outside of a individual Power BI desktop report and centralizing it in a cloud-based environment. Now, that's one of the key reasons why I think it's so important from an enterprise perspective to utilize data flows. It enables you to centralize your data architecture of some core data sets within the online service experience. Okay. So as a contrast, whenever you are using Power BI Desktop and you use the query editor in here, what you do within this environment is very unique to that specific Power BI desktop report. But what data flows can do is you can strip that out of an individual report and centralize it so that others can use the same transformations, the same data architecting or, or architecture that you, that, that you uh, originally may have done individually. So where does this make sense? In my view, this makes sense in core data sets that are used over and over again by a lot of users. Okay. So for example, and just, just as if this is just literally one example, and this is actually a change in how I personally have created dates tables for a very long time inside of Power BI. In the part, you know, a dates table is something that every user needs to use whenever they're doing anything to do with time or trends, etc. Right now, in the past, I would have gone in here and used our date table code from the analyst hub, um, and uh, you know I would have I copied and pasted it into my individual file here, and then I would have put it into the advanced editor and created my um, my date table with some parameters. Right to me now, though, it makes complete sense to actually grab uh, to actually. Um, remove that step from here and put it into a centralized data flow so that every single person in my organization uh, can use exactly the same date table. Okay. And this is just one example. Think about how this is an exactly the same example can be used over and over again um, across like all your data sets. Maybe it's customers, maybe it's products, maybe it's um, locations, regions, uh, so on and so forth, right? Anything that is sort of centralized, and you know, a lot of those are, would be lookup tables, right? Lookup tables, like filtering tables, put them into, or try to get them centralized in a data flow so that everyone is working off the same thing and not everyone is doing their own transformations and um, et cetera. You can still transform uh, things and, um, and uh, optimize things within Power, the Power BI experience after you've gone and grabbed the raw data set from, um, from the data flow. But to me, it's much better to, to get closer to the same starting point. Okay. Now, hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you the, um, the actual environment. Now, I think a lot of the hesitancy to actually using data flows is because it's so unfamiliar and, and users uh, um, and everyone's, you know, thinks this is this brand new complicated um, aspect to Power BI. And, and the reality here, it's not. It's actually so easy to move from something within this experience like within here, into a data flow, because literally all you have to do is come in here and copy code that you might already have, okay? So if you've got, say, um, some customer tables or, or lookup tables that you've created, right? All you need to do in a lot of cases is literally come and copy the advanced editor code and paste it in to the new code editor in the online experience. It's really that simple. It is seriously simple. Okay, so let's just go in and have a look at this particular one. 
and within and and the, also the the reality w with with data flows as well within a singular data flow you can have lots of different queries right so so think of it as this like one huge pipe but lots of things that can in intermingle within that pipe as it's flowing through um into your into your reports or, or into a variety of reports around your organization so you can do, you know, you within this experience, right? You can you can use a lot of very similar things to what you um, have in in Power BI Desktop in Power Query there. Um, but you know, one of the one of the easiest ways to get started here is just literally copy and paste um, data out of the uh, uh, advanced editor from your files and then centralize it within um, within a data flow and then reconnect to the data flow rather than um, um, you know, reconnect through in here. To your data flow rather than um going and get getting the raw raw data you know one of the other like really big benefits here and i've seen this over and over again with a lot of um, um you, customers we work with is that so many customer uh, so many users in large organizations are hitting exactly the same data source over and over again in different areas of the business right and you're doing it at all hours of the day there's a cost associated to that particularly in large implementations um, and you know, those with large uh, enterprise architectures around their data. And so centralizing this and only doing that data retrieval from a raw data source once and being able to do it, say, you know, very late, early in the morning or, or when no one, it doesn't really matter um, to anyone in terms of overloading the, the, the database or the data source, is, it's just a far more optimized way to do things, right? You do it once and you do it at a time which is convenient rather than just like having rescheduling uh, um, updates on your data all the time. What I did do in this particular instance, right, is within my, my one data flow, my one data pipe, I actually created different types of date tables. Like I've created this really comprehensive one. I then slimmed it down um, to an easier one that I like. It's based off the same thing though. And then I've gone down to an even um, smaller one, which is just like a really simple um, data um, date table. Okay, save and close. The other benefit here is, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's there, there's a lot uh, to take in, but the other benefit is that, you know, say for instance, something changes, right? Something changes in your data, which can upset like lots of data, like lots of reports. If you've got a lot of your reports linked up to data flows, you only have to make that change once right? And then it will flow naturally down to all of your different Power BI desktop files, rather than having 10 different reports all connected to the same um, a data source within here, you have to change 10 different things, right? So again, it's just centralization. It's just so, sen so much more sensible than, than having everything isolated, okay? And then when you actually connect to it, all you have to do is go um, into new source and then uh, I think power platform and then data flows, right? And then you can also create uh, connected data flows in lots of different workspaces as well, which is so handy, right? So like you can have um, a, a data flow, which is very specific to a uh, specific workspace you've got, but you can connect to it from a different workspace. If, if you allow that, you can actually provision that. So again, uh, it brings a lot of scale into how you're sharing the, the, um, yeah, the data organization piece internally. Now, one of the, um, so, you know, I've got a few here. Now, if you look at my um, ED, EDNA common data sets, this is just how, how we have set up our own internal reporting. You see that there's a few different ones down here. Now, what I also, as a, as a recommendation, as sort of my last recommendation here, as I round off, um, round off this video, is I also think, have a think about how you architect your workspaces, okay? This is also a very important part um, to, to, to building a strong foundation inside of here. It makes sense to, I think, have a workspace dedicated to common data sets and then um, utilizing data flows just within that workspace, like literally having a workspace of data flows. And then, you know, ultimately data marts as well. I don't, I'm not covering that in this video, but um, data marts is, is, is another um, option for you, I think, that, that you can layer on top of data flows. Um, but in terms of just using data flows that, that you know that you can do so much just from building all of these different sort of pipes of data through one workspace and then um showcasing and then centrally managing these maybe it's your data team your data engineering team or or one of your head analysts uh, who manages these core data sets and then everyone else can just feed off the feed off these pipes you know they can pipe that data into their own power bi files and then do their own um do their own you know, simplified model and then build their reports quickly off the back of that, right? 
this to me is just one layer of of um, that if you do this well like if you build the foundation well here it can just speed up uh, and improve the overall consistency um, and productivity of your of your power bi deployment okay so hopefully that's given you a few ideas i'm going to wrap up um, on this one but yeah look i i absolutely love data flows i think they are truly transformational not only the, not only for small um uh, uh, like deployments of power bi but large ones as well right it's just how can you effectively scale your data architecture utilizing data flows is a really strong way to be able to do that okay hopefully you got a bit bit out of this one giving you a few ideas good luck implementing it hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise dna tv if you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial please throw the video a like it really helps us and we really appreciate it also don't forget to subscribe to the enterprise dna tv channel uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use power bi and the power platform lastly check out enterprise dna's website plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily all the best take care